So guys, you join me on yet another ride on the mighty Multistrada 1260S. If I sound a little bit calm and quiet today, it's purely and simply because I actually have got earplugs in for the first time and I've never used earplugs before and it's quite a kind of weird feeling because you can't really hear anything apart from the echo in your skull, which is a bit weird. So if it sounds a little bit quiet, maybe I'll have to turn it up in editing or something. But today we are going to take a quick 60 mile ride over to Exeter from Liscard on the A30. I actually did this ride last week on the A38. I went the other way and then I got stuck in this horrendous traffic jam. So I just thought, nah, screw that. And I turned around and came back. I mean, it was just a recce kind of ride really in that respect. As in, I wanted to see what earplugs are like how the bike rode you know for like an hour with the screen up and you know how I felt on it and it was really really nice actually I really enjoyed it but I had my swimming earplugs in and then obviously not for wearing um, while you while you've got a helmet on and they were really uncomfortable actually so I decided to invest in some proper motorcycle ones which cost about 15 quid but they seem far more comfortable actually I have to say so as I said we are gonna now basically head towards Bodmin jump on the A30, I've got a full tank of petrol as you can see there and we're going to head off to speed motorcycles, I'm hoping the battery will last and the SD card will last all the way up there I have actually had the foresight to bring an extra SD card and an extra battery with me I know, I know, unlike me eh, the most prepared I've ever been for a semi long distance ride and I also want to talk to you today a little bit about the bloody problems that you might find selling a high mileage or relatively high mileage Ducati because I am having no end of problems. I mean this has done 38,260 miles exactly. I have had it up as the cheapest Multistrada 1260S on eBay, Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace for two weeks and I've had one person ask me if I would take an offer on it. That's it, no one else is interested. I've even contacted dealers to see if they wanted to do a deal with me on a GSX 1400 because I really fancy going back to one of them. And I would say nine out of 10 dealers have said, sorry, not for us. They just basically looked at the mileage and said, no, <laughs> they just weren't interested. And I know Motorcycles for All uh, have got a grey Turismo in there at the moment with panniers, 37,800 miles, so the same mileage really but no kind of evidence of any extras or the Desmo being done or new chain of sprockets, new tyres, crash bars, all that kind of stuff that this has got. And that's about 8 to 50 and they've had that up for weeks and no one is pulling the trigger on that. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit despondent bearing in mind that I paid eight and a half grand for this bike um, two months ago and I cannot even seem to get even seven and a half grand for it now. I've dropped it to 7695 for the last two weeks of the eBay auction and we'll see what happens. I'll leave it another week and then I'll drop it to 7495. The only kind of tickle I got was a dealer offered me seven grand on a part X or an MT10, which has done 30,000 miles and needed uh, some work. So, you know, why would I do that? I think I might end up having to keep this bike all summer. If I'm gonna take a massive loss on it, then there's no point in doing that in the first two months. I may as well keep it, enjoy it for six months of the summer, sell it at the end of the season for the seven grand that it's probably worth put it down to experience I mean you know me guys I'll make it back on something else you know I never bought this bike to make money on it necessarily I bought it because I really wanted it um, but would I buy another high mileage Ducati not if I was thinking of selling it on no uh, purely and simply because of the experience I've had here it is impossible to give them away the bizarre thing is when I spoke to a dealer actually the speed dealer we're going to go and see today when I spoke to him about it I even said to him look you know if this was a 1200 GS BMW with 37,000 miles on it, you'd consider that low mileage, but because it's a Ducati, all of a sudden that's an issue. I don't quite get that, especially with the service history that this has got. But, you know, and another couple of dealers said, look, you know, we would, but we've had real problems getting rid of Multistradas. I don't quite understand it, if I'm honest. It's a great engine, the 1260, so yeah, okay. Anyway, that's the upshot of this kind of little, not whinge, but uh, my findings as it were on trying to sell a relatively high mileage Ducati. Not necessarily a multi-stride, I think that's probably the case with most Ducatis or Italian bikes in that respect. People do not want high mileage Italian bikes. They don't mind Japanese inline fours and they don't mind German boxers by the looks of things, but uh, as soon as you tell them it's a big V-twin Italian with nearly 40,000 miles, people's asses start to twitch and they run away. So, you know, I think 
I mean, I'm not going to go below seven and a half this year. I'll lose a grand on it just out of experience because I love the bike. Um, but I'm not using it the way it was planned on being used. So, you know, I'd, I'd lose a grand on it you know, just out of stupidity. And as I said, I'll make that back on the next project. But I'm not going to lose 1,500 quid in two months. That's crazy. I may as well, as I said, keep it. If I'm going to lose 1,500 quid, I may as well keep it and enjoy it over the summer and then lose 1,500 quid. At least I can say I had it in six, seven, eight months. Um, you know, and I can put that down to experience. But I'm not just going to lose 1,500 quid in two months because I fancy a change. That's crazy. Anyway, that's my findings on trying to sell a relatively high mileage Ducati. It's a bit of a pain in the bum, by the looks of things. It is bank holiday weekend half term at the end of may i think it's the 27th or 28th of may something like that so we're almost into june so it probably isn't the best idea to be going out today <laughs> if i'm honest it's a sunday and as i said we're heading up to exeter and i'm not inside convinced that's a great idea because of what i found last weekend when i went out and that wasn't a bank holiday but we're going to take a different route and we are going to work it out and if I get to Exeter and it's a complete bloody shambles with traffic I'll just turn around and come back again whatever way I do it I'll have had a nice ride won't I but I'm hoping that the next time I chime in here I'll do a little kind of time lapse going up the A30 for you guys if you want just four or five minutes of that just to show you the route up if you like you can always pass forward through that if you look at the bottom of the screen now you'll see there's little sections there I'll just tighten it a38 ride or something if you're not interested in that skip to the uh, arriving at speed if there is no arriving at speed you know we didn't in that respect i'll talk to you about it on the way back but hopefully as i said we'll jump on the a38 and i'll chime back in as we're pulling into exeter and uh, heading on to speed motorcycles i've got my oppo find x2 light with the quad lock man sat just down there telling me where to go it's better you can probably see that now so that's helping out. So I'll cut back in periodically on our ride up to Exeter, guys. So if this camera is still rolling, that would be a real bonus, but I'm not convinced it will be. She's still babbling away down there, the old sat now, but I can't bloody hear anything because I'm on the bike. And obviously I've got my earplugs in, as we discussed in the first part of this video when we head off, when we started off. Anyway, we are literally about to pull up, I believe, at Speed Motorcycles, because it's telling me to take a right turn here. 
So I'm assuming that's exactly where we need to go. And I've gone the wrong bloody bit here, haven't I? And this is, of course, the quandary we get now with having a big Italian V-twin. As we're sat in traffic, the temperature just goes up and up and up and up and up. I can't imagine how difficult this must be to ride a huge, big Ducati or Italian V-twin in places like London. It just must be ridiculous. Drive like arseholes. Most of them don't know where they're going. And most of the time you're stuck in traffic. It's got to be open, surely, surely. So the good news is we've made it to Speed Motorcycles. It's just on this little industrial estate here, as you can see. Relatively busy, actually, for a Sunday afternoon on bank holiday weekend. But uh, we are here. Quite a big unit, actually. Bigger than I thought it would be, chatting to the guy on the phone. Anyway, we're going to go in and have a little look around this unit here. I'm going to take my crash helmet in in hindsight, because I don't know who's here, what they're up to, what the kind of demographic is in this area. So I'm going to make sure I take my crash helmet in with me. And we're going to have a little look around speed motorcycles. Hopefully, they'll let us. Right, let's get in this door. It's a great bike as well. I do love those uh, little RSZ 900s. I've considered one of those many times. Let's get inside. So we're indoors, guys. As you can see, an amazing host of used bikes. Some, as I've just been chatting to the owner, are literally 2023 20, bikes with just 10, maybe 15, 20 miles on, but obviously not main dealers. So uh, they just come in as used, probably part X, I guess, from main dealers who don't want them in the showrooms and they pass them on to local dealers. But uh, you can pick yourself up a beautiful speed, triple 1050 for five and a half grand there with 11 miles on it. 11,000 miles, should I say, sorry. And all the way down to these old 1100 RGSX Suzuki's. I mean, look at that. What a stunning old beauty that is. Really, really got a lot of time for these kind of bikes. These five-valve Genesis bikes here as well. They've got an amazing array, as you can see, of motorcycles for sale. And also up the top there, they've got all the clothing range as well. So if you need some clothing and you're in the area, pop yourself down. Let's have a little look at the current stock. We've got XR1200 Harley Davidsons as well. So they seem to have pretty much all the brands you would expect to see. Ducati, BMW, Harley Davidson, KTM, Triumphs, the old Suzuki's. This is a bit of a beast, isn't it? I mean, that's a Harley Davidson. I don't know what it is, if I'm honest, but uh, it's obviously been very, oh, it's a fat boy. Very, very nice. If I had 30 grand sitting around right now, I would, uh, yeah, I think I'd be jumping on that. And all the way down to the cheaper options, obviously, which is the 1200 Sportsters. It seems to have quite a few Harleys down here, actually, which is uh, a surprise, a pleasant surprise. And here we've got the old banger section, as I would call it. Although these bikes are going up in value incredibly. I remember I had a, GS1000S in blue and white, the Eddie somebody or other replica back in the 80s, late 80s. Uh, that was probably a 1500 quid bike then. Now you can't get one for 10 grand. I mean, look at that. That's just a GS1000 and that's seven grand. That's the kind of prices you will be paying for some of these older ones. I wouldn't even want to guess how much this Z1300 is. I can't even remember the last time I saw a Z1300, if I'm honest. But some beautiful, beautiful bikes, I think you'll agree. As I said, there is the clothing and boots and gloves section just up there. So effectively, they've got everything from cheaper bikes, shall we say, around about sort of four to five thousand pounds, all the way up to custom Harley Davidson's over here. This big fat boy, which I keep kind of homing back into because it is a beautiful bike at that isn't it i mean if i had 30 grand what year that is 2021 and obviously as i said heavily heavily customized beautiful old triumph rocket there as well yeah not my cup of tea but i can see the attraction i guess here's a bike we've actually had and never reviewed on the channel an r1200 rs i didn't get on with it i had that bike four days and i sold it because i just did not get onto it with it or should i say old ducati monster that looks like a little baby ktm yeah the little 125 a lot of those about at the moment s1000s honda africa twins gsx 1400s which we will be looking at in a minute and some more scooter -esque type things in the corner and these huge gold wings as well look at that I mean, effectively, anything you want, used as it were, Speed Motorcycles down in Exeter will probably be able to help you out. If you want to chop your bike in as a part X, as it were, I'm sure the guys down here will be happy to talk to you about that. But if you're in the area, if you live anywhere in Cornwall, Devon, and you fancy looking at used bike prices and just popping in and having a chat with these guys, do so. Really, really impressive showroom, as you can see. All right, that's it. We're going to get back on the road now. As I said, the bad news is I won't be able to film the journey home because my action cam has just fallen off the side of the helmet. So that's not ideal. But I will chime in when we get home and, you know, my thoughts on the trip up and on the trip back and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's go and have a chat with the guys here and I'll catch up with you guys when we get home. 
So we are home nice and safe from our little jolly over to Exeter to see the guys, Paul and Shane, I think it is, over at Speed Motorcycles. Really, really nice guys. Very, very knowledgeable. They've got some amazing bikes in there as well. Some really, really tasty looking classics. The owner actually was the owner of the Z1300. You may have seen in the uh, previous part to this video. Amazing bike. Apparently he's had that since he was 17 and he's never likely to sell it. And I can see why. Stunning bike. Anyway, talking of bikes, we are back and the Multistrada has performed flawlessly. It is absolutely covered in every bug from Devon to Cornwall, but it has once again been an absolute joy to ride this all the way to Exeter and back. I just stuck it in cruise control and uh, we were gone. It was just, it's, I cannot tell you how much fun this bike is. A couple of little things I will give you as a top tip heads up as it were. Because I'm of a certain age, I do tend to suffer a little bit with back pain after a while i bought myself one of these kind of they're like a kidney belt basically but it's for weightlifting. i put that just over my t-shirt under my jacket that has eliminated any lower back pain that i get it keeps everything locked in i know it seems a bit of a faffy old man thing to do but it was only like 20 quid off amazon i think and i would highly recommend that if you get any kind of middle to lower back pain after a couple of hours in the saddle try one of these it really really helps the other thing which i forgot to wear today were my gel pants as it were those are effectively just a pair of boxer shorts with gel inserts in there because i wanted something you know to make this saddle here a little bit more comfortable and i don't want to go to the expense of spending 300 quid plus on a sergeant seat or something like that so i'll stick those a little picture up in here they really work trust me i wasn't entirely convinced but they really really do help i didn't wear them today and i really felt it i had to get off at exit and kind of walk around to get rid of the numb bum as it were so top tips get yourself one of those if you've got any kind of lower back middle back pain get a set of those pants there with the gel liners in you're good to go the only other thing i would suggest is something that i do suffer from only in the summer really because i wear summer gloves and they don't come up all the way to the top of the wrist as it were they just come up to the bone there so what i did is i bought some of those little tennis sweatbands things that you put on your wrist put one of those around each wrist and then the wind that comes off the motorway if you've got summer gloves on is negated it goes away it's brilliant so three little top tips there for your back for your bum and for your, for your wrists that's it. I'll stick a little picture up here as well just to show what I'm talking about. But that's it. That has been the bank holiday, the May bank holiday half term ride over to Exeter to see Speed Motorcycles. I hope you enjoyed it. I couldn't film on the way back, obviously, because as you know, the camera fell off the bloody helmet, but we'll sort that out. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe, give the video a like, a thumbs up, a share, all that good stuff. And don't forget to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, as well as YouTube. We've got all sorts of different pages going on now. And uh, we update the TikTok and Instagram probably the most I would say with little things that we're up to that you may not see on YouTube so for future products heads up that kind of stuff progress reports head on over to TikTok or Instagram there's always something going on over there anyway as I said if you haven't subscribed consider doing that give the video a like a share and a thumbs up we will catch up next week on budget cars and bikes take care guys thanks for watching